Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast, brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. It's a Monday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, how you doing, beautiful? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing quite good as well. I've uh, I've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. I printed off way, way, way more than we're ever going to get to. So maybe, just maybe, we'll have a super long bonus break today. Okay. So I get a lot of good stuff. I just don't know where to put it. And I keep thinking, maybe that's where we put all this stuff. Otherwise, look at all this stuff stacking up over here. That's all right. It's good so, to have extra. Well... Just saying, maybe we get rid of some of it every day. So uh, if you want to listen to the bonus break, that is on our podcast through Sprecher.com. And you can hear the whole program there. And then at the very end, we have a bonus break each day. So taking a look over here, we're going to start out in uh, Virginia, in Harrisburg, Virginia. The story of James Martin, who was entertaining the county courthouse to pay a... I'm sorry, he wasn't entertaining them. He was entering. He was entertaining the He was entering. He was a court jester. (laughs) No, he was entering the county courthouse. (laughs) He he did entertain them, too. But he was going in to pay a fine stemming from a 1999 drug bust. So this thing, you know, from a long time ago. And he was walking in, and they had a metal detector. And the guard said, you're going to have to empty your pockets. He said, oh, okay. So he reaches in, oh, no. looking for what's in there, pulls out a dime, hands bag. that to the guard, <laughs> reaches in, pulls out a dime bag as well. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I just said. I saw that coming. Yeah, he had a little plastic baggie full what of marijuana. What idiot. He handed that to the guard. Then he was allowed right in. Oh, I'm <laughs> he sure was, he was. And <laughs> escorted. Back, he was back in jail for a while. What plenty an of, idiot. Plenty of metal detectors there. Uh, just... Just to, you know, I'm not a, I'm not involved in any sort of illegal activities like that. But if I were, I would make sure that if I was going to pay my fine for the last time I got caught, right. I wouldn't bring it with me no. this time. That just doesn't <laughs> really add up a whole lot. So there you go. Oh, Coming up in a bit, we're going to talk about how to get a raise or at least feel like you're getting a raise. <laughs> also going to talk about some other fun stuff on this Monday. It is the Monday edition of the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com. They only get paid if they help you sell your RV. If you're buying an RV, you can find great deals at RVWheelitor.com. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Wouldn't it be great to get a raise today? That would be wonderful. That would feel really, really feel good to just get a raise, but... No, I'm not offering. Sometimes oh. you can't get a raise because, you know, the funds are just not there. But if your boss cannot give you a raise, what is the next best thing, Heidi? I don't know. Why don't you share? I think that this story is wrong. I think time off is the next best thing. But I'll tell you what the story says. The story says a new job title, a new survey. <laughs> oh. Seriously. A new survey says 70% of most office workers are willing to give up on a pay raise in return for a more professional-sounding job title. Filing clerks opt for the title data storage specialists. What? Janitors like the title custodial engineer. So let me be what I want to be, and you can keep paying me what you want to pay. So that is why Heidi's new uh, (laughs) title here is, instead of sidekick, it is... The goddess of John's program. Oh, well, no? I do like that. No, that but I still want work. to race. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know that it would really work if it's the goddess of John's program. You could be the host. I'll be the co-host. That's fine. And you just delegate everything to me. How's that sound? <laughs> Works for me. I'm glad we got that arrangement taken care of. All right. Coming up in a bit, we're going to talk about a really bizarre story. Because as parents, my wife, Heidi over here, she and I uh, have two kids. We've never really even had to have this conversation, but there are parents who stay up late at night talking about what they can do to keep their kids out of a gang. You know, I don't want them to be in a gang. I don't, you know, fortunately where we live, we don't have a ton of that, but uh, there are people who stay up late at night worrying about this. Absolutely. Well, there's a couple, we'll just call them the couple of the year. Their fight is which gang should our four-year-old join when he grows up? What? Yeah, that's what their argument is. That is on the way with some numbskulls in the news coming up 
in a bit on the John and Heidi. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just one dollar, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. And we got some numbskulls in the news today. Most parents pray their kids will never join a gang, but in Commerce City, Colorado, a couple is actually fighting about which gang their child should join. Uh, By the way, their child is only four right now. Some people should not be allowed to have children. Well, take a listen to this. 19-year-old Joseph Martinez. Wow, first of all. What? Yeah, he's 19. (laughs) Yeah. He started young. He's a member of the West Side Ballers Hispanic Gang. Well, he stormed into the Hollywood... his kid is four. Yeah. (sighs) Wow. He started when he was really young. (laughs) He stormed into the Hollywood video store where his girlfriend works and threatened to kill her. Then he knocked over a bunch of displays and a computer. She, by the way, is also a teenager, and she's a member of the Crips. She told police that they'd been arguing about the upbringing of their son and which gang he should belong to when he grows up. Joseph was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct, harassment, and domestic violence. Do you say harassment or harassment? Harassment. Yeah, I've heard it both ways. So, you know, the second most shocking thing about this is that they still have Hollywood video stores there because they don't have those here anymore. Uh, So that's kind of interesting. But it is absolutely crazy to me that their fight wasn't over how can we give our child a better life so he doesn't follow in our footsteps, but instead they're complaining or fighting over he should be in my gang. No, 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 he should be in my gang. How did these two end up having a kid anyway? Well, isn't that a... They were like 14 and 15 years old. But isn't that old? kind of against gang code? I'm not really in a gang or anything, but I thought they didn't hang out. Isn't that the whole point? <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't exactly know how all that works. Maybe if, if you're in a gang... I have a theory, but I've already been told that I'm not allowed <laughs> yeah, to express really it. So. Uh, if, if you're in a gang, uh, first of all, you're probably not listening to this program, but <laughs> if you are, <laughs> can you imagine? They're all sitting around their gang hangout... <laughs> Their bandanas. Listening to the John and Heidi show. <laughs> I agree with what he said. <laughs> she really has a point. All right. Probably going to get shivved or what do they call it? I don't know. I'm going to just move on. All right. Thanks. Coming up here in a bit, we've got uh, some advice for those of you who happen to use passwords for anything. Good advice on the way. This is John Stossel. Anything that makes it harder for you to speak limits your life. So if you or someone you know stutters, you can call the Stuttering Foundation for help. 800-992-9392. You're listening to the John and Heidi Show podcast. It is the digital age, baby. Seems like everything nowadays requires a password, doesn't it? Yes. As you're messing around on your computer. What are you doing over there? I'm looking for something for the bonus break. Ah, I see. Okay. Well, uh, if you're like most people... You probably have at least one password that you use for things, but you're supposed to use uh, multiple different passwords. A lot of people use the same password for a lot of different places. As you might guess, this makes things a lot easier for cyber crooks. The problem with repeating passwords is that once a hacker breaks into one account, they can easily hop from account to account and get all of your stuff. Yeah, Unfortunately, I am guilty of this, and I really need to... What is things up. What is your password? I'm not telling no, you my I'm password. I was going to see if you'd fall into that trap. Uh, experts warn that just because the bad guys haven't gotten to you yet, don't underestimate them. They recommend that even though it is a hassle to come up with different passwords and then write them down in case you forget them, do it and change them once in a while. I'm going to tell you a little tip that a friend of mine gave me. I'm not going to tell you who it is because I don't want you to know because then you can maybe, I don't know, she still has something in there that you, you wouldn't be able to hack. But she came up with, I think this is a brilliant idea, her password um, method. And her password method is this. So she's got like the same core password that she changes maybe every six months or every year. But for every website, it's a little different. And the core part is the same. But let's say it's Facebook. And we'll just, we'll just use uh, Fuzzy Bunny as the password. I doubt that's what she uses. But we'll just use that. So on Facebook, she would use Fuzzy Bunny FB. For Facebook, and then, or maybe just Fuzzy Bunny F, and then on Twitter it'd be like Fuzzy Bunny Twitter okay, or Fuzzy Bunny T. But once you figured that out, that wouldn't you wouldn't take a rocket scientist but, to be able to break that on every single website. But here's the thing: a lot of the time, it's not a person doing it; it's a computer. They have a like a program that tries to guess your password, 
And once it guesses it, it goes through and tries to use that on all of them. So using a little bit of human you know, thinking involved, and maybe you use the third letter of each word, whatever. But I thought that was a pretty cool idea. I keep saying I'm going to do that one of these days, but I can't remember any of my passwords. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, huh, right now it just automatically opens. I'm going to just leave it that way. Coming up here in a bit, we've got the scoop of the day. That is on the way. And I'm going to talk about a dude that met a hot chick at the bar. Really hot chick. Well, we'll explain. That's on the way as well. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com. They only get paid if they help you sell your RV. If you're buying an RV, you can find great deals at RVWheelitor.com. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Story here about a guy that was at Drake's Bar in Kendall, Florida, when he bumped into a a hot 20-something chick. And when I say a hot... 20 something chick i mean he he was there and uh he agreed to help out with this display involving some liquor and some fire and a woman dancing on the bar the aforementioned liquor and fire uh, w- once they connected didn't necessarily go so well together they caught her on fire oh. yeah she panicked and kicked the flaming mixture into a, a man passing by the man suffered burns of up to 20% of his upper body. Both were taken to the hospital. So talk about meeting a hot chick at the bar. She was, <laughs> she was so hot, she was on fire. So don't mix alcohol and fire. Strangely similar to how we met. That is exactly how we met, as a matter of fact. Uh, I remember it was, I was walking by. I was dancing on the bar, and I kicked over this. <laughs> For people who know me, they, that's really funny because I don't really drink. So. Now, they wouldn't be surprised if I said you was dancing on the bar. <laughs> no, nobody would be surprised, I don't think. I think I, per, gram, grammatically correct, that would have been you were, not you was. <laughs> you was dancing on the bar. You was. All right, Scoop of the Day is on the way. Thanks for listening on a Monday. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just $1, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollar shaveclub.com slash radio now back to the john and heidi show podcast time now for the scoop of the day brought to you by the dollar shave club go to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more about how you can get razors delivered right to your door now our scoop of the day a 10 ton lump of wet wipes and fat has been removed from a sewer yeah. in west london this toxic lump of congealed fat and household waste known as Fatberg was 132 feet long. Whoa. So there was like wet wipes and, you know, dumping fat down the drain and stuff like that. And it congealed 132 feet of sludge in this Ew. drain. So that is kind of gross. That's pretty gross. All right. Roughly three in five adult Americans are not maintaining a budget. 14% lack a solid sense of their monthly spending habits. With that in mind, the financial organization WalletHub decided to conduct an in-depth analysis of 2015 metro areas with the best and worst budgeters. According to the study, the upper Midwest has some very budget-conscious residents, while the South might have little work to do. Eight of the ten metro areas with the best budgeters were in the states Iowa, Minnesota, South Dakota, and North Dakota. Meanwhile, the study found that all but one of the worst budgeting cities were in the South, specifically in Louisiana, Georgia, and Mississippi. The one town that's not South was Las Vegas. They that they struggle. Surprising. Yeah, they struggle. Well, you know, it's it's uh, that town. I don't think that they even added up. They just put it all on black, <laughs> put it all on red, whatever. Well, see, that's Pull just it. it. Again. Uh, and my parents lived there for a little while. I know. And I I it was know a- that that they. They got themselves in a little. They put more than their fair share in those slot machines. Hey, you know, those giant tall buildings don't build themselves. Yeah. Just saying. Kraft says it will remove artificial color and flavors from the original recipe of macaroni and cheese. Uh, and U.S. customers are increasingly demanding more quality ingredients. They're saying, I want quality. If you want quality, why are you feeding your kids mac and cheese? From my instant box meal, I need <laughs> high quality. Are you serious? The new and improved mac and cheese, which people will complain about because it doesn't look right, is going to hit store shelves in January, and then they'll come back to the classic then formula come back to the regular in one February. Will demand it. On Tuesday morning, a charred pizza crust forced an evacuation of the Iowa Capitol building. Nothing was damaged. No one was injured. We talked about that, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah, that was a couple weeks ago, I think. According to a study from Harvard Medical School in Boston, fresh blooms brighten more than a room. They also lift your mood. 
So if you have fresh blooms in the room, it's going to cheer people up. Well, then I should bring some flowers in. There you go. We've got some plastic ones right there. <laughs> we Those do. are so fresh. I don't think they quite do the same thing. I had to blow them off with the uh, uh, leaf blower the other day. So <laughs> maybe that's not so fresh. Recent research suggests that your computer keyboard could be, I don't even want to say it, dirtier than your toilet seat. Ugh. That I is can disgusting. see that. I'm not going to touch my cleaner. keyboard anymore. I don't know. I'm going to start cleaning it right now. <laughs> Got a couple more things here quick. Smooth or hairy? If given a choice, women say... Smooth. Smooth. Researchers have asked women to compare the attractiveness... Oddly enough, men do as well. (laughs) (laughs) Researchers have asked women to compare the attractiveness of men before and after shaving their chests, is what we're talking about. The majority of women love the smooth chest, while only 20% said, I want that Magnum P.I. look. (laughs) I'm thinking they're talking about on their man with that subject. Uh, A police camera filmed a duck breaking a speed limit in Germany. That's kind of cool. Oh. Speedy duck. It was registering 39 kilometers an hour in a 30 kilometer an hour zone. The duck was flying a new, uh, I'm sorry, a few, a few centimeters above street level. He wasn't flying in anything. He was flying on his own. Flying a few centimeters above street level when it triggered a speed camera. A police spokesperson says they have not been able to trace the offender, but they did let her go free. And our final story. Apparently pizza can be classified as brain food. This is good news. Jacksonville, Florida's Joseph Witten was arrested after he broke into a Hungry Howie's Pizza. And he stole some cash, and he stole credit cards and receipts. And How did they know it was Joseph on the surveillance video? Well, it seems Joseph works for Hungry Howie's oh. in the same location that he broke into. Oh, my goodness. And he was still wearing his uniform <laughs> while he was breaking in. So not exactly the smartest cookie in the bunch what, what, what is that saying <laughs> the smartest bulb on the i don't know cookie tree i have no clue uh, <laughs> our strange law we'll end with that in texas a recently passed anti-crime law requ- requires criminals to give their victims 24-hour notice oh uh, what <laughs> <laughs> either, either, either orally or in writing to explain the nature of the crime that they are going to commit that's in texas <laughs> They like law and order in Texas. You're going to rob this place. You need to let us know 24 hours in advance in writing. Wow. And you're still breaking I, some laws. I would laws. be very interested to see if that if that holds up and if that happens. I think this is just a, a way for them to have one more thing to pin on you. And you didn't notify your victim 24 hours in advance. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> I love that law. All right. That's your strange law. And this has been your Scoop of the Day, brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Hey, we talked about Smoother Harry. 80% of the women wanted that smooth chest. I'm not going to shave mine, but if you wanted to, you could use your razors for that. Yep. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio and check them out. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just $1, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Sometimes we have a guest at this time, but we don't have a guest today. But I have my beautiful wife with me here, so it's kind of like having a guest. Hey, how you doing? Hey, good. When 31-year-old Peter Howler entered a bank, he wanted to rob it. He didn't anticipate seeing a security guard, though. Peter quickly stuffed his gun back in his back pocket, but as he did, the gun went off, and he shot himself in the, you know, hmm, back end side. He was rushed to the hospital. He was later charged with attempted robbery, even though he didn't rob the place. Because he brought a gun in there to do it, he still got charged. So huh. now you know. Even when uh, healthy, some people religiously head to the doctor every year for a physical exam. That's usually covered by health insurance. But a new review from Danish researchers conclude there's very little benefit to such routine exams on healthy people. What? The researchers analyzed information from 183,000 people who took part in 14 trials carried out in Europe and in the U.S. of A., In all of the trials, participants were randomly assigned to either receive a routine health check involving screening tests, a physical exam, or advice about lifestyle changes, or receive just one. Results showed patients who received routine health checks were just as likely to die over a nine-year period compared with those who did not receive the the, uh, health checks. So saying that if you're going to get sick, you're going to get sick. They're saying if you're sick, if you're feeling sick, that's when you get the checkup. Yeah. I don't think that it's a bad idea. If, if you do the routine thing and you're saying, hey, I'm going to go in just to make sure everything's okay, 
Because that's when people – isn't that where they de- usually detect, hey, you got an issue here. We should check in, check into this before it comes bad. I don't, I don't believe I don't so. Know. Well, now we know. Or maybe we don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com. They only get paid if they help you sell your RV. If you're buying an RV, you can find great deals at RVWheelitor.com. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Today is a very special day, Heidi. You know what today is? What is today, John? thought you'd never ask. Today is Monday. It is the 25th day of May. It is National Missing Children's Day. Oh, Such a sad thing. That is awful. I we, couldn't even imagine. As a parent, I could oh, not imagine. Be, I, as a kid, I watched Unsolved Mysteries all the time. Yeah. And it's funny because I have no idea why, but I have their telephone number memorized. Now, yeah. that telephone number has not been on that program for at least a decade. It was back in the 80s. But the number is 1-800-876-5353. Mm-hmm. So if you know of somebody that's missing and you want to, you can call in. I wonder if that number still works. It does. I know it did a couple years ago. I don't know if it does now, but it, it did a few years ago. Uh, today is also National Tap Dance Day, Nerd Pride Day, also known as Geek Pride Day. And they cannot agree. The nerds and the geeks will not agree on which one it is. It's Nerd Pride Day. No, no, it's Geek Pride Day. They're both correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, take pride, folks. You guys can celebrate. Uh, today is also Towel Day, Memorial Day, which we, of course, already knew and we've already talked about. Prayer for Peace Memorial Day as well. So uh, I'm going to celebrate Memorial Day myself. How about you? Absolutely. There you go. And you can do those other things if you want as well. Hey, something interesting. I just want to mention this here. I don't know where else to mention it. In California, an amusement park operator has taken down an inflatable slide after somebody complained that it was very offensive. Guess what the slide was? I have no idea. It was called Titanic, and it looked like a giant boat sinking. And you'd go up the steps, and you'd slide down on the deck. I could see where somebody... It's... (laughs) Clever, I guess, clever. but I'm like, I like oh, I mean, and that's... honestly, anybody who was on that boat is most likely not hanging out at this slide. So who could possibly be offended? You I weren't just, there. Here's the thing, though. You don't, Why would you take something that's a tragedy and say, hey, let's make a ride out of this? Hindenburg, yeah. the ride. <laughs> I just can't imagine. What next? You're going to have, I'm not even going to say I'm it. I'm just saying, people are so overly. Uh, I know. It's, it just really makes you Strap on the bubble wrap so you can go out in yeah. public. Because, you know, it's, it's, we get offended very easily. The world is easily. offensive. I'm sorry. The world is an offensive place. I don't Pull think up I... your panties and deal with it. You're fine. <laughs> you heard it here first. Gosh. Let's move on. Thanks for listening on a Monday. It's the John and Heidi Show. Hi, it's Jewel and Kelly Pickler. Lung cancer is the number one cancer killer of women. So we've joined the American Lung Association's Lung Force because it's going to take a force of women to create new hope. Please join us. Fight lung cancer in women at lungforce.org. You're listening to the John and Heidi Show podcast. A woman in Texas receives a water bill for fourteen hundred dollars. Mar- oh. uh, Maria, uh, she's in Wichita Falls, Texas, received this thing, and her it's usually thirty bucks. In March, it was fourteen hundred. Turns out there was a leak in her home. City officials are refusing to waive the charges because they say you didn't get your leak fixed. It was your leak. It wasn't our leak. It went through your pipes. So. She says, I don't have $1,400. That's been one heck of a leak. Apparently. She said, I That's don't. That's more than a leak. That's a geyser. <laughs> she didn't know. notice that. <laughs> My basement is completely, <laughs> completely full of water. The There's a fire hydrant blowing water out. <laughs> right up. I was going to get around to checking into it. Well, they came up with a compromise. They're going to have her pay an extra dollar every month until it's paid in full. You know how long that's going to take? That's good. She's going to die. 1,400 first. months. That yeah. means it'll be paid off in 20 20- one fifteen, a hundred wow. years from now. So at least they have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Coming up, we're going to talk about your swimming pool that may be closed. I know it's Memorial Day. This is when they open. But the U.S. government, the Justice Department, may be closing down your favorite swimming hole. We'll tell you why. That's on the way. This is John Stossel. Anything that makes it harder for you to speak limits your life. So if you or someone you know stutters, you can call the Stuttering Foundation for help. 800-992-9392. You're listening to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Fair warning, I may have to restrain Heidi. Oh, boy. And get some duct tape and tape you to that chair. (laughs) All right. The U.S. Justice Department issued a 60-day stay of execution 
for hundreds of thousands of public swimming pools, which have been required to install ramps and wheelchair lifts by today or face lawsuits over violating disability laws. President Obama in 2010 dramatically expanded the rules for access under the Americans with Disability Act. Now, I understand it's all meant to be good, but uh, in this thing, the new regulations means that, that every publicly accessible pool from municipal facilities to hotels must have two accessible means of entry, and at least one must be a ramp or wheelchair lift. Spas must also either have a lift or a transfer system to help disabled uh, people enter them under the new rules. Under the law, non-compliant facilities could be sued and shut down. In many cases, closing down would actually be cheaper than fighting the lawsuit. So there may be swimming pools in hotels, in just regular like uh, municipal pools where they say, we cannot afford to do this. Mm -hmm. We could do one. We have one. But now you're saying we need to have two. We're supposed to chop a hole over here and put a ramp into the pool? What? How many people take their wheelchair with them in the pool anyway? Is that how it works? I've never seen that. Why would you have a wheelchair We're ramp? We're talking water access or access to the facility? I think it's water access, if I'm reading this correct. So anyway, they're saying there are many pools around the country that they have that 60-day, uh, and, and it's it's up now, that they're going to be closing. So, yeah, well, uh, you'll you'd have to almost see. have to. If, it, if it's water access, there's no way you could afford I don't to understand. do that. You'd have to tear out. You'd have to do one of those gradual I don't know. So there, I have no clue what's going on. But I don't know if this is going to affect any swimming pools in this and neighborhood. And if it's actual just pool access. I can't think of very many public swimming pools I've ever been to where there, where it's not just flat surface all the way around the pool i can't think of any actually yeah, where you had to go usually. through steps to get so i i believe it is like a, a zero access going into the pool mm-hmm. so i don't know interesting i thought you would be freaking out a little more than you did so i'm proud well, of you i am I, i'm I'm, more confused? I, I'm confused because okay. the story was not That's, very clear there you go well it's probably if clear. It's access to the facility that i could see because all i mean all buildings everywhere have to have if they're public, have to have a handicap. The access, story, so. as is written, may be clear, but I'm no Brian Williams. So, <laughs> <laughs> although if I were, I would probably tell you that I am because I would lie about it. So. <laughs> Coming up in a bit, we're going to talk about a story from Time Magazine and people sitting at a desk all day long. Yeah, we're going to tell you what you can be doing. That is on the way on this Monday. Thanks for joining us on Memorial Day. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com. They only get paid if they help you sell your RV. If you're buying an RV, you can find great deals at RVWheelitor.com. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Are you stuck at a desk all day? Yes. Time Magazine says... Sitting in a static position all day can leave your neck and shoulders and back and hips feeling tight and most likely out of proper alignment. In light of the fact, they have a list of five stretches you can do every day, anywhere, to combat these stubborn aches. Do I have them? <laughs> but I don't know them, so I'm thank looking you for to listening see. to the John and Heidi show. <laughs> that's where the story ends. <laughs> Seriously, that's where it ends. <laughs> they have them, but they don't share them with me. <laughs> what the what? Oh, that's funny. Huh. Well, let's just make some up. <laughs> I don't know. If you want to know, I guess Time Magazine has the story. <laughs> I'd love to get it for you, but I'm stuck at this desk, so I can't help you. Coming up here in a bit, we've got a story about a short attention span. What's that, Heidi? <laughs> a short, huh? What? Hello? Uh, that's coming up. And we also are going to be talking about... Some supporters. I don't know what. I, I'll have to read. I'll read this between now and then. We're going to talk about something else towards the end of the program. Thanks for listening on a Monday. It is Memorial Day, so if my mind is not here, it's because I'm thinking of those brave men and women who gave their lives to give us the freedom to sit here and read these goofy stories. In all seriousness, absolutely, positively, thank you, thank you, thank you to every man and woman who put on a uniform and defended our nation. Today is a very special day. So if you have the day off work, and we're as soon as we're done, we're done. Uh, get out there and celebrate the right way. It's not about barbecues and baseball and races. You know, it's about making sure that 
If you see a veteran today, give give them Absolutely. a big hug and tell them thank you. Coming up, we'll get back to the silliness. That is on the way on the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just $1, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Do you have a long attention span, Heidi, or do you, are you kind of ADD? Like- I think I have a, a pretty good good attention span pretty normal one you do huh yeah i think so all right according to time magazine that's all they had right there that was it i'm just kidding (laughs) earlier i had a story where they didn't give me the whole story according to time magazine the average attention span for the goldfish is now nine seconds why do we need to know this stuff but let me finish the story (laughs) But according to a study from Microsoft Corporation, people now generally lose their concentration after eight seconds. So we have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. Exactly. That's really sad. They say the challenge, uh, I'm sorry, the change highlights the effect of the increasing digitized lifestyle. Researchers in Canada surveyed uh, 2,000 participants and they've studied the brain activity, 112 others as well. Microsoft found that since the year 2000, about when mobile technology revolution really began the average attention span dropped from 12 seconds to eight. Ooh, we had a whole whopping four more <laughs> seconds do you really think that's an epidemic you know how much more could you get done in those extra four seconds i'm thinking we had a problem way before yeah, we got it's to been a, it's been an issue for a while <laughs> i think it depends on what you're talking about as to whether or not somebody's interested and when you think about it it's different for everybody because yeah. there are some people that their attention span is probably less than the 12 seconds or less than the 8 seconds. There's others, you know, they could pay attention to something for hours and not get bored. You know, so it all depends on, you know, what's going on, I suppose. Coming up here in a bit, we've got some other fun stuff. I still haven't pre-read the story, so I couldn't tell you what it is. But I'm hoping it's good. It's on the way on the John and Heidi Show. Hi, it's Jewel and Kelly Pickler. Lung cancer is the number one cancer killer of women. So we've joined the American Lung Association's Lung Force because it's going to take a force of women to create new hope. Please join us. Fight lung cancer in women at lungforce.org. You're listening to the John and Heidi Show podcast. This was an interesting story that was in the news. Uh, Lizzie Valverde, she graduated from Columbia University last week. She had two special supporters in the crowd, her long-lost sister and her birth mother. From ABC News, they say Valverde, 50, uh, 35, and Katie Olson, 34, met two and a half years ago on the first day of a writing class at Columbia. Both women had already had a lot in common, and they were returning to college in their 30s, and they wanted to pursue their passion of writing. But that day, the women discovered something else they had in common, a mother. They're sisters. Their mom, Leslie Parker, was a teenager when she gave them up for adoption. Hmm. And that's how they reconnected is they took the same class. How cool is that? That is cool. I think God is awesome to be able to just say, you know what? You guys, I'm going to put you guys together. Boom. There you go. Even though you've been apart all this time, I'm going to bring you back together. I just think that's awesome. All right. I've got a bonus break that we're going to be talking about here. I'm going to tell you this stuff. Did you find something too? I did. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to talk about. What would you do if your boss came to you and offered to pay you a million dollars a year? Would you take it? Yeah. That's what we're going to talk about. What are you going to talk about? I've got a joke. Oh, no. Mine is way better than what you're going to talk about. We'll just put it that way. Sure it is. (laughs) All right. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. If you want to hear the bonus break, it's on Spreaker.com. Am I saying that right? I have no Sprecher, idea. Spreaker? I don't know. I should probably check into that. That's <laughs> where our podcast is. And it's under the John and Heidi Show. Thank you so much for listening on a Monday. Time now for the bonus break. Only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. All right. Time now for our bonus break. What would you do if your boss offered to pay you a million dollars a year? Would you take that? Take a listen to this. Nine public university presidents made more than a million dollars, according to University of Texas at Austin. President Gregory Fenves said he did not want to be one of them. They offered him a million bucks. Guess what he said? What did he say, John? He said, no, I'd rather not. How about you pay me 750000 instead? So he gave up a quarter of a million dollars. How much did he give up, really? He's making 750000 a year. And he gets a 10% bonus. Mm. He said a million dollars is too high for public universities. That's pretty cool. So I know 
you know, Heidi and I were talking about this ahead of time. She was rolling her eyes and shaking her head, said, he probably did this to get into a better tax bracket. I don't know. I don't know how all that works. I have no clue. But I can tell you, it's kind of cool that he would say, I don't need that much. I think it's a tax bracket thing. Could be. Or he could just be one heck of a nice guy. All I know is Heidi has not offered to pay me a million dollars a year. She's the one that writes the checks around here. I don't make anywhere near that. I don't either. I don't even make 100000 a year. I don't even make half of that. I, I make hardly anything. I barely get paid. So I'm just glad to be here and have fun. But the good news is, if you did offer me that, I would say no. I don't need that much. <laughs> That's good because you're not being offered that much. <laughs> just, just putting that out there. <laughs> so, you're a giver, John. I know. I do what I can. You said you were going to give me a joke. I have a joke. What is your joke? Okay. A lecturer is giving a lecture in the middle of a college class, and he says, Today we are discussing, discussing sexual intercourse. There are 60 different ways of achieving sexual intercourse. Oh, boy. A guy from the back yells, 65! <laughs> the lecturer says, there are 60 known different ways. The same guy again at the back yells, 65! <laughs> is his name Charlie? The lecturer <laughs> says, despite the gentleman at the back, there are 60 different ways known to the medical profession the first of which being man on top of woman. Voice at the back says, 66! <laughs> <laughs> so he hadn't thought of that one? He didn't think of that one. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that cracks me up. Uh, oh, boy. These are the kinds of things that make me smile. I just don't think that's a good idea to end on that. Let's, <laughs> let's end with this. I got something else over here from Reuters. This is like a respected news agency. Okay. They say an unidentified 22-year-old man was taking a driving test with a license examiner near Hague. This is in the Netherlands. When he got stuck on the railroad tracks. Yikes. <laughs> the driver and the examiner had to jump out just before the train uh, rammed into their car. So they were on the railroad track stuck during his driver's test, mind you, and a train hit his car. They had to jump out. The examiner and the uh, the guy had to also get out of the way. It pushed the, the car 150 meters down the track, but then it boomeranged back when another train coming from the other direction wow. hit the car and shot it right back towards them. So they almost got hit by the car again. I would have loved to have seen this on video. Do you think he passed his test? <laughs> well, probably wasn't his fault if the car got stuck. How could that be the driver's fault? I don't know. What was he doing to get it stuck? It's probably a pretty chintzy little car if it's going to get stuck on the tracks. Or the instructor had him taking a very questionable route well, you just, if a car uh, could get stuck well, on you the tracks. just cut right through here? Oh, there's railroad tracks. That's, ah, that's fine. I do it all the time. All right. This is going to do it for your, uh, what do we call this? Bonus break. There you go. <laughs> this is your bonus break. Thanks for tuning in on a Monday. Happy Memorial Day to you.